Hey what is up guys, welcome back. So I decided to make a new video directed at new players to answer a few questions I've actually gotten recently. So the first one is to show my B8 team which I actually got quite a while ago. I forgot about it until I decided to make this video. And the other is to show how I farm my gold. Now um, I don't think farming is actually the right term because farming in the traditional sense if you're playing like MMOs or something like that, it's basically, you know, you're going out, killing some mobs, and basically you get you get gold. And the only thing that you invest into it is basically playtime. Um, and in games or mobile games like these, there's actually a cost to going out and you know fighting things and killing things for gold. Um, in Monster Super League, there is a it does have a stamina system. Um, you know, this is which is in Monster Super League is the energy and basically what you're essentially doing every single time that you're going out and and running some some story maps golems or anything like that you're converting your energy um, plus time into gold so every time that you do a conversion you have to invest time and you also have to spend energy to convert this energy into gold basically and um, if you guys are familiar with the infinite astrogen farming method, you guys can look that up. It's in my channel. It's actually one of my <laughs> one of my more popular videos. Um, it basically tells you of a method where you can convert gold into astrogens. And astrogens, everybody knows how to convert into into energy, right? You basically you just buy more energy like this, and you convert you successfully convert astrogens back into energy. Now the good thing about Monster Super League is if you do this conversion every single time, every single loop that you go through, um, depending on the step where you're converting energy into gold, if your if this this step is um, efficient, then you will actually be able to make a profit every single time you do a conversion, and that is basically how you infinitely farm astrogens. Now, I'm going to be telling you guys um, one of the fast, faster ways to farm and um, efficient ways to farm. And there's actually a difference be because some, some ways are actually faster than others but actually cost more energy. So I think the most popular way that people farm gold is usually in Golems B8. Now, um, why would you want to farm Golems B8? One, the, the main reason for farming Golems B8 is it's just super easy like this boss is a joke like it's <laughs> the whole level the boss everything is just a complete joke um, he is really really weak and you can pretty much do it with just like five water units at five stars um, I don't have a lot of water units I don't even think I have them gemmed up okay I can't really show five water units at five stars but I did. Someone did request that I show my team for farming this level. I was actually leveling my <laughs> Dark Gatito here while I was farming for a little bit of, bit of gold. Um, I don't really have an exact team for farming this. I usually just go with like anything that I build with full attack. So all all these units are built with all three slot attack. Like she's on three slot attack, three slot th three slot attack. Um, this is three slot attack. She is actually 100% crit rate with um, attack and crit damage, so she's basically going to be hitting really, really hard every single hit. And I basically just don't rely on crit at all, and I just throw this in, and it's usually pretty good. It doesn't really, um, it doesn't really get stuck anywhere besides if they put attack down on on my team. So this is basically like um, my team for b farming B8. I just go with a lot of attackers and. They basically nuke through everything. Now, um, I don't have any sort of elemental advantage on this stage, and you can actually get elemental advantage pretty easily by, you know, building like four water monas. I always make the joke, but it's not really a joke. It's actually there's a lot of truth in it. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me for a B8 team or they show me their box and they're like, I don't have a lot of good water units, I just tell them to build four water monas and then you got a B8 team, and it's actually doable it's actually possible I have an alt account that I sh probably should be leveling but I haven't been really working on um, that has like two water monas and they're at five stars um, I'm, I have some like random four star units and I'm, I'm actually actually wait I um, by instinct click the boss because whenever I'm watching like if I'm ever watching and farming at the same time if I have some free time to watch while I'm farming I would always um, I would always click to make sure it, it hits anything. I do this for star stones, I do this for a lot of things. Um, it's actually a pretty good strategy as well. If you're if you are not strong enough, you can 
you can try to semi-auto and use a little bit of your actual like physical time into into farming to get to get a, a little bit better results now this is, team isn't really fast um, they don't have a hundred percent crit rate I don't have siphoning on any of them they don't have any like crazy skills that can get their bar up in like one turn or anything like that but they are all attackers so I can actually clear this relatively easily um, and that's basically what I use to farm BA now BA is probably the number one most efficient way well not efficient but time if it it has a good balance of time efficiency and um, energy efficiency because you're farming a later stage of BA gol or you know of the of the golem floors and you're also farming something that takes you it only takes you like you know less than a minute and a half to do every single time it's not too and it's actually not hard to get to this this point because a lot of my damage that i'm using um for farming that stage is actually already overkill you can actually achieve that amount of like the amount of damage to one shot anything on the stage um with some water units relatively easily basically you just build like four water monas and you already you already have the most uh like pretty much uh you cannot get physically any faster without the use of siphoning gems up to a certain point so um, BA is actually really really efficient it's super super easy to clear through the stage and build a team for you really don't need anything else you just need a bunch of monas and just stack them together and they just nuke through the whole entire stage now the other thing I want to talk about is um, is just energy efficiency there's I, I think a lot of people do ask the question of you know should I be farming B789 or B10 I used to always think that it's more efficient um, or it's more energy well it is actually technically more energy efficient to farm B B10 mainly because the gems in B10 actually have more substats on average this is all on average like everything is R in this game is RNG but this is on average everything I talk about is on average all right on average B10 has more gems that have more substats and also they have like about a two percent higher drop chance for six star gems so if you're farming for gems definitely b10 is definitely the the best way to go um if you're at, at the level where you're able to farm b10 now the other thing is obviously you have to consider the amount of time that you you have to spend in farming b10 now i think i made the newbie mistake a long long time ago of um i wanted to make a b10 team no matter what i thought it was just like I would get much better gems, I would be able to upgrade my gem quality a lot faster if I was just constantly farming B10. And I think to, to a certain extent I was I was right um, because you know obviously B10 does have a higher drop rate so over a longer period of time if you're farming B10 versus the other floors if your clear times are not too far apart or even if B10 is just slightly slower than when you're farming the other floors in terms of getting gems and upgrading your gem quality B10 is definitely the better choice now you have to also consider the amount of gold that you you'll be getting if you're only talking about gold farming B10 is actually not as efficient as um, farming the lower floors because of how much longer it takes you to farm b10 um, and also the e one extra energy cost so um, you know if if you're if time is not a thing if you're not um, worried about run times at all and the only thing that you're concerned about is energy efficiency like how much energy I can spend um, like I only have this set amount of energy to spend for for farming and I can only spend this amount of energy and um, you know, I, I have no other ways, but which is untrue in Monster Super League. There's always ways to get energy because all resources in Monster Super League are convertible. So um, you have to cons consider how fast your runs are in order to make things efficient. Now, um, I really don't think that B10 is, is worth it unless you can get, like, at the very, very least, your team under three minutes or so. If your team is not under cannot farm b10 under three minutes it's actually not efficient for you to farm b10 because you can actually do more runs of well actually this is also very situational because it depends on the monster um the, the slot slots of your monsters because b9 actually takes a really really long time to farm as well it almost takes i think for certain certain people uh, maybe if you had like a full fire nuker team you can actually nuke through this pretty fast and I don't and I the only thing I can really use is to use like a dark nuker team and it actually takes me longer to farm B9 than it does to farm B10 so um, for me if I really just want to upgrade my gem quality it's actually not worth it but if you have a team that's able to farm B8 B7 
and you already have a team that's able to farm B8 and B7, it's actually efficient for you to work on a nuker comp that, that can, um, you know, get, get you some gems and, like, get some gems for, your, for a nuker comp. Um, try to focus more on square and diamond slots, and then gem those monsters up and actually use it for, for like, nuking B9. Um, I'm not too sure how fast I can even clear B9. I'll, I'll do it with this, I'll do it with my full attack comp. I don't even know if they can survive it. I never even tried it. I never even bothered farming B9. But this is probably not going to work too well. I should probably fit in an armor breaker. I mean, I do have sustain with this comp as well because I, I do have my snowy. So I'm not too worried about not being able to clear it. But I think it'll take much, much longer for me because I don't have um, any fire units. The, the good thing about the the floors b7 8 and 9 is they're all like of the normal elements so you can actually always use elemental advantage against these floors and that's kind of the ways the developers designed um the the floors b7 8 and 9 is for players to to build up three teams which they can have elemental advantage against and then they can um basically just uh, farm these these stages for for their gems and B B10 is actually a lot harder because it not only requires you to be tanky, you need damage, and you also cannot, um, you know, abuse elemental advantage in B10 because if you use a light unit, you have to make sure that you, you light unit is at the very least strong enough to survive, or else it's not going to be usable for B10. Um, so you can't really use the elemental advantage unless your your gems are up to a certain point. Um, so there's that as well. I somehow feel like this boss is going to take forever to kill. <laughs> but I might as well try it on video, just so you guys can see. Um, obviously, if you guys have a fire team, this will be like super, super fast. My my B9 team is about... Um, or my B10 team is about um, a minute 50 to... to um, two minutes and a half, usually. And I, I do it with my fire succubus and three dark mihos. And that's basically the fastest team I can get it get it down to. Sometimes it does get a little bit slower if someone actually does die. But um, oh man, this is this is pretty bad. Yeah, but even without ele elemental advantage, I think this team might be faster than my B10 team. It's a minute 50. I mean, if I had four fire units to do this, it would be it would be like a minute and a half. So, you know, it's I, my recommendation for people that are able to farm B, B8 or B7, like one of those floors, is to actually build a team for B7 and B9. Because even though you can't, um, you won't be able to have the auto, the, the most, um, the most energy efficiency, it's actually more time efficient to farm these floors. And you can actually farm your gems faster on these floors than if you're farming B10, unless you can get your B10 team to like under three minutes. Um, then maybe at that point it's it's better for B for farming a B10 team. But then if you have like a really strong fire team that can farm B9 in like um, you know a minute and like 10 seconds or just 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 a minute like around averages around a minute, then it's still worth it because you can get a B B8 team to a minute. You can get a B7 team to to a minute as well if you like have elemental advantage on all these floors. And it's not too hard. The gem requirements for you to be able to build a team for these floors also isn't too high. So you can actually um, get through 7, 8, and 9 really, really easily and build an effective farming team. And it actually saves you more time. because The reason why time is important is because all resources are convertible. So you can use the extra time that you, you have um, to convert gold into astrogens by doing you know sliming. And um, you can convert astrogens back into energy by buying astrogens, and then energy back into gold by farming the golems. Obviously, um, the, there's another thing about. Um, I think this is mostly just for farming gold. Um, obviously, you know, everywhere everyone's different in a different part of the game. Um, it, you also have to consider what else you get from farming just farming farming the dungeon dungeons because you know even though you're spending the same amount of time you're probably selling more gems more shittier gems on these floors um, due to the fact that that um, the 
the rates for dropping 6 star gems are slightly lower than B10, and the rates for dropping gems with more substats are also also slightly lower than B10. So if you're if you have an effective team to farm B10, then obviously in terms of gem progression, it's actually much much faster for you to farm B10 versus these three fours. But because you're also selling more gems, you're also going to be able to get gold faster. So if you're only trying to, if your main objective is to get gold and your secondary objective is to get gems, because obviously you wouldn't be doing this. Like there's no point in, in converting over and over again if you're not making any sort of progress, right? So um, if you're able to make a little bit of progress in your, your gem quality as well as farm gold at the same time, but your main objective is to farm gold, then it's actually more efficient for you to be farming these three, three floors than B10. And B10 is only um, more efficient even in terms of gem, gem upgrading if you can um, you know, farm it basically like at the very very least under 3 minutes. So yeah, that is that is pretty much it. I don't really even farm golems too much. I've been basically um, farming a lot in in story map because once you, um, I'll actually talk a little bit about this as well. This is a little bit more advanced, but you can actually um, do this as as well when you progress further on into the game. Now this is probably for the majority of the people. This is or, or majority of. Um, People that are that are newer, because I, I did actually say this is like a um, a guide for newer players. This is actually pretty far, but if you're able to farm at the very very least Star Sanctuary, you actually break even in terms of gold. So you can basically um, repeatedly farm this this stage for free and catch catch event monsters if you're farming on the gold stage on extreme. In um, yeah, if you're farming on the gold stage on extreme. You're in Star Sanctuary, you will be be able to basically um, break even at this point. And if you go further and you farm Skyfalls and Slumbering City, then you're actually able to make a little bit of profit. But then you also also have to consider the amount of time that you spend into doing this. And the only reason why you would actually be want, wanting to do this is to um, one, if there's an event going on, like um, at the time of recording this video, there is currently a Gatito event where you have to capture these um, Gatitos and do fusions. If you have an event like the Gatito event or any sort of capture event going on, you can actually use that time um, to farm these stages and you can catch the event monsters while making yourself a little bit of profit each time. So. Um, you won't be able to actually make gold really, really fast by doing this because half the profit that you you make from doing these farming Star Sanctuary or Skyfalls or Slumbling City is actually from from um, obtaining variants and and rare monsters. If you're able to get variants or um, super rare monsters or or I think legendary monsters also give you some astro gems as well. You're actually able to complete these like ch these capture quests if you capture like a, a variant you know, um, Miho, a variant, whatever. If you catch any variants, you actually get Astrogen. So your Astrogen count goes up. And as I said before, Astrogen gets converted, can get converted into energy, which and energy can be converted into gold. So um, in terms of, if you're just speaking in terms of like resources, you're actually gaining quite a lot as well. If you're not just talking about gold. It's, um, to me, it's the, the concept of gold in this game has already become super super fluid like i see gold as as seeing astrogens now when i'm <laughs> when i'm playing the game like I'm, I'm super poor right now i probably shouldn't be making this gold farming video while while i'm completely flat broke but you can actually check some videos maybe tomorrow or the day after you'll see my resources go up quite a lot because um i'm constantly converting constantly farming and doing this over and over again to to build up my resources so you'll see that, you'll th you'll see that my my shit's legit. All right, my shit is legit. If you're, if you follow me, um, in my my later videos, but obviously if you're watching now or if you're watching later in the future, you can actually check a few videos after this, and you'll see the upload date, and then you'll see my my um, my gold count go up. You'll see like how the event is still up, and only um, only a few days have passed, and I was a um, I'll be able to get my resources all the way back up so you guys can see see me do that as well because I think for now I've actually um, started farming BA again because I'm just serious about getting my gold gold count up 
and getting my astrogem count up. So if you're talking about just farming gold, farming astrogems, the most eff efficient way is actually just BA because BA is just so, so fast. But you can actually go to B7 or B9 to farm as well um, if you have the teams to do that. And it can actually help with your gem progression because if you need, have monsters that need triangle gems or need diamond gems, then you have to farm these fours in order to progress um, and also get resources at the same time. But if it's not that important, you can actually you know, farm, farm, farm these fours instead of B10 because these fours take so, so, like they're basically so much faster that you can get more gold. Um, but you won't get as many good gems, basically. That's what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, that is pretty much it. So, um, I think the other thing I forgot to mention is the, the other benefit to farming this is you're, if you're at the point where you can farm dragons and stuff, then um, you're also able to get dragon sigils, which dragon sigils are limited. You need dragon sigils to enter the dragon dungeon during um, the weekends, and it's a really, really good way to farm up dragon sigils for for um, end game players as well because you're making some sort of profit and it really depends on what is important to you right now so if you're trying to catch capture event monsters and farm gold at the same time then um, you need to be farming the the later later two maps like the, the t last two maps um, or you need to be farming during like the double gold time or something like that and farm on gold stages then actually that can actually make you a little bit of profit as well but um, if you're not able to do that, then the only way that you can sustain yourself or farm gold is to, you know, do it through golems, do it through B7 or B8. Now, the, the conversion is not really efficient um, until the, the point where you're able to farm at the very, very least B7, 8, or 9. These three floors actually have the same amount of gold gain. They're supposed to have the same amount of gold gain. I, they might differ. Um, the drop rate maybe would, would differ by a little bit, but... Um, in, in theory, they should yield the same amount of gold gain on these th three floors. So you at least need to be at the point where you're farming one of these three floors, or you need to be at the point where you can farm on extreme mode on the last two maps, which is actually harder because these monsters are actually stronger than the, than the Golems B10 monsters. So um, the last two maps on extreme mode is actually um, pretty difficult. And yeah, it's actually pretty pretty hard to get to this point so this is actually just like for um, a lot more advanced people but if you're able to at least farm star sanctuary and you're forced to do a capture event like the gatito event um, that's going on right now you can actually farm the gold stage of star sanctuary and you can you can basically sustain yourself here you basically will not lose any gold while you're doing this if you just keep doing the, the conversion over and over again while farming star sanctuary for gatitos you will not lose any sort of resources um, while you're doing that here, so you can actually complete the event if you're at the very very if you're at the level where you can at, at the very least farm star sanctuary on extreme on the gold stage and um, You can spend the other time when you're trying to actually make gold you can go go back to the dungeons Maybe probably b10 is, is the fastest dungeon for everyone you can spend some time in b10 um, sell the gems, you know make some gold and then do some sliming convert convert and then um, go back to Star Sanctuary and just keep farming over and over again if you're at the point where you have absolutely no resources to spend at all, which is what I'm doing right now because <laughs> I'm broke as well. So yeah, that is... and I need to capture Gatitos. Like, I'm broke and I need to capture Gatitos at the same time, so it's, it's basically what I'm doing. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. That is just everything I know about um, farming gold efficiently. And you, it really depends on you. It depends on how fast your runs are. Um, just a general rule of thumb, I think, for if you're farming B10, like your team should be um, basically for it to be efficient, it needs to be like under three minutes. If it's not under three minutes, it's not efficient for you to farm B10 at all. And um, obviously, you can, if you're lazy, you can actually farm B10 because you don't like to manage like what types of gems you get. You don't like to. Um, you, maybe you don't want to build a lot of teams for, for, for the different floors. And maybe you have like just um, a lot of aggressors, a lot of um, Light Victorias, Sea Stars, you know, Mihos. Um, and then you have like maybe the Venus or something like that. And then you can actually throw that team into B10 and it should be pretty effective. And, um, you know, you don't want to spend the extra time in building a different team for each floor. 
then you can actually do that as well. But um, it does actually hurt you in the end because I think not having a whole full fire team or anything like that for B B9 like I do now, I'm not able to get triangle gems and farm gold at the same time. I'm basically forced to have to go to go into B10, and the only way um, I can efficiently farm gold is to go back to B8, which is why it, I have this like like I have like twice as much um, square gems as anything else because I've been. I've already cleared through a lot of my inventory to get rid of a lot of my square gems, but it's still pretty ridiculous. Um, but yeah, it it's just some of the mistakes I made. Well, I wouldn't really call them mistakes because I really don't. It doesn't matter too much to me right now if I can't farm B9 um, efficiently. But I, at the very very least, you know, you need to have you need to be able to farm something um, in order to progress. So that's pretty much it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and if you, um, what, what was I going to say? Yeah, if you have any questions, that's what I was going to say, yes. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. I can't believe I, I like, messed up my outro or, or anything like that, but, um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, um, be sure to ask. I actually have a Discord. Um, you can actually hop on Discord. I'm always, pretty much always on Discord. If you have any questions you want to ask me and, and need me to answer right away, I will pretty much always answer you right away unless I'm sleeping or um, fapping. Yes, fapping. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.